Okay, today I'm going to be taking a look at the unit circle and um, we're just going to give you some little hints or tricks on how you can fill in a unit circle if um, your teacher expects you to fill in like a blank one. They just give you a blank unit circle and expect you to fill it in. Um, first thing that um, I do like to do is, as soon as I get that blank one, I like to color coordinate it um, any three colors you want, but like, like I have this one color coordinated, all right, the outside X one color, the inside lines that make the inside X another color, and then the, I should say middle, and then this inside X here in another color, okay, because there are all kinds of patterns, and if the very first thing you do when your teacher hands you the blank unit circle is to fill in those three lines for color-wise, then that will help you in the memorizing and trying to fill in the unit circle. Okay, so um, here is a blank unit circle. Okay, let's um, zoom in just a little bit more because I want to be able to see this. Okay, so um, I have already taken the time to put in the, th the three colors, all right, for starters. Okay, now, um, usually I tell um, my students to start with the four points, all right? We know it's a unit circle, which means it has a radius of one, okay? So um, the ordered pair for each of those are just, you know, one, zero label those going around. All right, going up here, this point then would be 0, 1. All right, start at the origin going left, this would be a negative 1, 0, and starting at the origin coming down then would be 0, negative 1. All right, so no one's going to miss filling in those. Okay, and then um, you start, obviously, if we start here and we're working our way counterclockwise around, this would be zero degrees. It would also be zero radians. All right, <clears throat> as soon as I come up here, I'm at 90 degrees. All right, and you just pretty much have to memorize this is going to be pi over 2. All right, keep going. Halfway around the circle is 180 degrees, and that makes this pi. And then all the way around to here would be 270 degrees and this would be 3 pi over 2. All right, and finishing, I don't have a spot here, but all the way around is 360 degrees, and we are at 2 pi. All right, so right off the bat, I tell my students, those are the four points that you just have to out and out memorize, okay? And then usually, the next quickest thing to fill in would be all of your degrees going around, all right? And it's the same pattern. If I start here, it's always 30, 45, 60, all right? So I would be adding that to zero, so this would be 30 degrees, this would be 45 degrees, and this would be 60 degrees, okay? Assuming you have a calculator or you can do it really easily, now I'm starting at 90. Well, again, I'm going to add 30, I'm going to add 45, I'm going to add 60 going all the way around. <clears throat> that would make this one 120 degrees. If I added 45 to 90, I would be at 135. If I added 60 to 90, I'd be at 150 degrees. Okay, degrees going around are pretty simple because it's just um, a lot of addition. Here again, if I start at the 180 degree mark, I would add 30, I would add 45, and then I would add 60. So that makes this 210, that makes this 225, and that makes this one then 240. Okay, starting here at 270 and continuing on with that same pattern, adding 30, adding 45, adding 60. So that would make this 300 degrees, that would make this 315, and then 330. So filling in the degrees all the way around the unit circle should not be a problem for you. Okay, now, the trick for the radian measures. All right, what I tell the kid is to start up here at the top and fill in each of these denominators first because they're all going to be the same. If I start at the center, my denominators are always going to be a 3, a 4, and then a 6. So it has that pattern. It's 3, 4, 6 over here. It's 3, 4, 6 on the left-hand side as well. Okay, now coming down here, again, starting at the center and working my way out, just like we did at the top, my denominators are going to be the same. So then this one's going to be a 3, and this one's going to be a 4, and this is going to be a 6. This one's going to be a 3, and a 4, and a 6. So I have all of my denominators now for my radian measures. <clears throat> okay, now, then I tell my students, come back here to the first quadrant. All right, each one of those are always pi. So that's pi over 3, that's pi over 4, that's pi over 6. Okay, and then if you needed to, at any point in time, check yourself. You can always convert between degrees and radians, radians, degrees, and you can verify that, yes, that matches. Okay, now that I've got this first 
quadrant filled in. All right, now I can do my number numerators down here in this third quadrant very easily. There's an imaginary one that sits in front of those pies. All right, so six plus one is gonna give me a seven. I'm gonna follow my pink line down and seven pi becomes my numerator down here. All right, doing that on the blue line, four plus the imaginary one is five. All right, coming down here, that's my numerator, five pi, so it's five pi over four. All right, in this last one on my yellow line, three plus the imaginary one there, three plus one is gonna be four. I'm gonna follow it down here. I will have a numerator of four pi, so four pi over three. So now I have got um, my third quadrant filled in, okay? Now, if you come over here, all right, to this one, um, um, I usually tell my students, memorize your numerators over here as well, okay? So it's going to be a 2 pi, 3 pi, and then 5 pi. Okay, so if we can memorize that, starting always at the center, and 2, 3, 5, then we're pretty good to go there. Now, once you memorize your numerators here, you can get the numerators down here in the fourth quadrant the exact same way. 3 plus that 2. Following that yellow line down here is going to give me a 5 pi right there. All right, doing the blue line, 3 plus 4 is 7. Follow the blue line down here, I'm going to have a 7 pi on my numerator there. And doing the last one, 6 plus 5 is going to give me an 11. Follow that pink line down here, I'm going to have an 11 pi. All right, so now you've got all your radian measures filled in. <clears throat> okay, now we want to take a look at the first quadrant for our ordered pairs. Okay, now I usually tell the students to put their left hand down, all right, using their pinky and their thumb, if they can imagine a right angle in that right there, then the three fingers are the 30 degrees, the 45 degrees, and the 60, 30, 45, and 60. All right, so I'm gonna focus on this ordered pair for my 30 degrees first. So in order to do that, I'm gonna put that finger down, the one that represents 30 degrees. All right, the fingers on my left are gonna represent the fraction on the left. The fingers on the right are going to represent the fraction on the right. All right, now it's always the square root of the fingers over 2. All right, it's always over 2. So each one of these denominators are always going to be 2. All right, now for my left one right here, I've got three fingers, so it's going to be the square root of 3 over 2. All right, on my one on the right, to the right of my turned down finger, I have 1. So square root of 1 is 1 over 2. Okay, so then there's the first one. Now I'm going to put that one up. Now I'm going to focus on the 45 degree angle. Well, that would be the middle finger, so I'm going to put it down. All right, it's always square root of the fingers over 2. So the fraction on the left, square root of 2 fingers. So square root of 2 over 2. All right, and then the one on the right, square root of 2 over 2. All right, now for 60 degrees, I'm going to put my 60 degree finger down. All right, fraction on the left is the fingers on the left of my turned down finger. Square root of 1 is 1, so 1, and it's always over 2. The right hand fraction, square root of 3, over 2. All right, so now I have the ordered pairs completed for my first quadrant. Now, this is where, again, the color coding comes in really handy. All right, if I've got the square root of 3 over 2, and 1 half is my ordered pair for this quadrant right here, all right, I can follow this pink line down, and I'm going to have the exact same ordered pair. The only thing that's going to be different is my signs because I'm in the third quadrant. Well, to get to any ordered pair here, the first one has to be negative and then negative. So it's going to be this ordered pair with a negative negative. So negative square root of 3 over 2, and then negative 1 half. Okay, now same thing, follow this ordered pair, follow the blue line down. It's going to be in this quadrant, but everything in this quadrant is negative negative. So negative square root of 2 over 2, negative square root of 2 over 2. All right, taking this ordered pair and following the yellow line down here. All right, same ordered pair, just different signs. So negative 1 half and negative square root of 3 over 2. Okay, now same thing. All right, I am pink line to pink line over here, each one of the ordered pairs are going to match. All right, so this one is the pink line. So in this quadrant, it's still going to be square root of 3 over 2 and 1 half. But again, I'm now in the second quadrant of which everything is negative positive. To get to that point, I would have to go negative and then up positive. 
Alright, so I have a negative positive, so transferring the pink line over here, it'd be negative square root of 3 over 2, and then 1 half. Okay, blue line, transferring that over, keeping the first coordinate negative, negative square root of 2 over 2, square root of 2 over 2, and then transferring this one over, I would have a negative 1 half over, uh, negative 1 half, and then square root of 3 over 2. Alright, and again, then these will come down into the fourth quadrant. And again, in the fourth quadrant, I'm going to have a positive and then a negative, because everything is positive negative in the fourth quadrant. So then bringing this ordered pair down, I'm going to have square root of 3 over 2, and then a negative 1 half. Cha the signs are the only thing that's changing. Bringing this ordered pair down, I'm going to have square root of 2 over 2, and then negative square root of 2 over 2. Bringing this ordered pair down, I'm going to have a 1 half, and then a negative square root of 3 over 2. Okay, now your unit circle is completely filled in. Now I also um, generally have my students add the tangent to each one of these ordered pairs along, um, just because we use the tangent quite frequently, and if you go ahead and memorize those, then they're not too bad. And again, if you can memorize just the first quadrant, then everything's going to transfer color-wise. All right, if you recall, tangent is going to be sine over cosine, so that you don't have to be doing that math all the time. So one half over the square root of 3 over 2. All right, uh, simplified fraction there, this one is square root of 3 over 3. All right, anything over itself is always 1, so the tangent there of 45 is going to be the 1, and then the tangent of this one, square root of 3 over 2 over 1 half, is just going to give you a square root of 3. So there are my tangent values for the first quadrant. Okay, now again, all I have to do um, is bring them down, all right, into this third quadrant, all right, and because this was a, a positive divided by a positive gives me a positive, a negative divided by a negative also gives me a positive, so literally they transfer down here into the third quadrant as the exact same sign, everything's positive, so this one is square root of 3 over 3, 1 transfers down here, and square root of 3 transfers here. Okay, now when I switch it over to the second quadrant, now I'm dividing unlike signs, so each one of them are negative in this quadrant. All right, pink corresponds to pink over here, so this is a negative square root of 3 over 3. This one is a negative 1, and this one is a negative square root of 3, transferring each of the colors over. And again, in the fourth quadrant, I'm dividing unlike signs, so it, they're going to be all negative in this quadrant as well follow them down. This one will be a negative square root of 3. This one on the blue line will be a negative 1, and this on the pink line will be a negative square root of 3 over 3. Alright, so complete unit circle including your tangent values as well. Alright, so easy ways to memorize or to fill in if you have to fill in the entire unit circle. Okay, thanks for watching.